Norway and Gunstein Bach with Maud and Ord. And could I also invite Ambassador Niels Engelschön. Now, Gunstein, your book uh, talks about the emotional and psychological, partly talks about the emotional and psychological impact of road traffic. I'm sure you're glad you don't live in Brussels or your book would have been twice as long. Well, you know, my book is only 200 pages long, <laughs> so maybe that would have been a good idea. But to tell the truth, I'm quite sure if I'd lived in Brussels, it would not have been a novel on traffic, it would have been a novel on chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And is there anyone you'd like to thank tonight? I want to say thank you to Hermann Knoflacher, who for decades has been the traffic planner of the city of Vienna, and whose rebel perspectives on modern traffic has been very inspirational for me. And I want to thank the people of the Commission, who had a fantastic idea of introducing this prize. Finally, I want to thank the members of the Norwegian jury for their stunning competence and amazing taste. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. So this novel is a, is a very um, intense look, exploration of the side effects of a car accident and its impact on a family. Um, but is it also about the impact of technology on modern life? Well, I think essentially I tried to construct the novel as uh, with two lines, one line being exactly the impact on individuals by, uh, by uh, first by the car accident, but then after the accident also this, uh, the technology that comes with uh, the medical aid and prothesis is, uh, you know, what kind of aid that technology provides in uh, rehabilitation. And second, uh, the second scope most important is uh, technologies and especially connected to the automobile, its impact on our lives and our society. And I'm thinking about how we organize our societies around the automobile to a much greater extent than we realize in our daily lives. So if uh, I try to find a kind of perspective where I would look at traffic and look upon the relationship between man and the automobile, uh, as if I didn't live in traffic every day with the routine that we all have and try to see what is actually what is actually happening, what's actually going down here. And there are so many aspects that I try to implement somehow in this novel. And one of them is, for example, the, the conformism that traffic exacts from each and every one taking part in it. Like your 18 year old, and you think that you want to have a driver's license, you want to have a car, you think it's freedom, but it's not freedom. It's your way into the machine. Because once you are in the traffic, it means that everybody has to act in the same way. We all have to find the same way of interact. If we break the rules, it can be lethal. We have to abide by the rules in traffic. So we are sucked into this machine and we sit there separated from each other in little private cells in the compartments of the cars and we have our little separate freedom. So in that sense I think the car is also emblematic of uh, consumerist capitalism and how it is very much about this division of space and time into smaller units that can be sold. Well I think for me writing a novel is a lot of work, it takes a couple of years at least and at some point uh, at the end when you have to edit and be strict and think about what this going to look like when it comes out is quite boring. So up until that point it should be driven by curiosity and uh, lust, a lust to write. So I need to write about things that fascinate me and traffic actually does the, the concrete relationship between man and the automobile. I have noticed previously when I've written my former novels that this theme somehow sneaks up from behind and inserts itself and suddenly I'll writ have written a chapter about a man crossing the street looking at the automobile and how he looks at the headlights like it's an animal. 
not looking at the driver. So how we are accustoming ourselves to the presence of these beings that we have made ourselves. So yeah, I, I wouldn't mind at all altering the way that people think about their lives and how we organize our lives at all. And I'm actually very inspired in this book by the the man who has been, uh, I don't know the word in English, he's been planning the traffic in Vienna for several decades. His name is Hermann Knoflacher. And he has uh, made some very interesting perspectives and thoughts about these very things. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind provoking people into thinking differently about how, what are we controlling and what is controlling us in return. Many people say you are a very original voice, a very original voice in modern Norwegian literature. Is that a, is that a pressure on you uh, or is that something positive to, to live up to? Uh, it's only very positive, yeah. I mean, I can only use the voice I have anyway, so if somebody thinks that's an original voice, I'm happy. Yeah. Well, I think the option or the increased possibility for translation is the that's the real price, I think. I mean, that's, it would be wonderful if it could be translated into other languages and if it could reach a much wider audience. Because especially as Norwegian is such a small language, so it's, I mean, if it's not translated, it will be read. There are five million potential readers and it's a very small uh, linguistic area. So for Norwegian writers to be translated is a great benefit to be able to, uh, to reach very different levels of readerships.